Welcome back. And I'm hoping we have a connection, okay? I just got a, a real big spinny there saying it was trying to connect. So I'm just going to check quickly. Sorry about this. Oh, technical difficulties. You got to love it. We have a snowstorm going on right now. If it's not one thing, it's another. So let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me okay. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> We've got a snowstorm going. And of course, as soon as I jump on live, it does the big buffering thing. So we're all good, I hope. Give me some thumbs up or some hearts if you can hear me and see me okay. Otherwise, I'm going to jump off and start again. Hi. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm not seeing any hearts, any thumbs. Can you hear me? <laughs> oh, I hope you can hear me okay. There we go. Okay, okay, perfect. Welcome back. This is the Shabby Chic Vintage Chick. For those of you that are first time watchers, welcome. And for those who have been here for a while, you know, welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, guys. So I didn't realize I was on Craft Around the Clock today, by the way. Thank you, Tracy, for having me here. So glad to be here. Um, so a little over an hour ago, I was jumping onto YouTube and I was doing a video on this barrel. And then I realized, oh no, I've got to be on Craft Around the Clock. So I jumped off of there. So the first part is on YouTube. Sorry about that. But we are painting up a barrel, guys. And I'm going to show you what this started out as, okay? This is what I started with. Oops, not that. Go back. Go back. Mercy me. Mercy me. That is what we started with. Have you guys seen those in the dollar store? We started out with two of those barrels. You can still see they're green and red in there. And they each had, of course, a bottom like this. And just to let you know, guys, these things pop out really easy. I thought I was going to have to X-Acto knife and cut it out. But you just give it a little push and then reef it right out of there. It popped out beautifully. So now we have this vintage barrel. So what I was doing before I left my live on YouTube, because I wanted to be here, was I was showing how... This was all painted in Canapé, which is a chalk paint um, by Country Chic. And then I'm, you know, adding a little light, which is called Suri. So I'm just taking a tiny bit. I'm going to put it on my table here. And then I'm going to grab my scotch pad. Have you guys used a scotch pad for painting yet? Let me know in the comments if you've used a scotch pad for painting. This is amazing. Okay, so I picked these up at the dollar store. You can see Scotch brand pads. Just your kitchen scrubby pads. Oh, yes, trying to stay nice and warm here. We've got a snowstorm going on. It's just started, so good timing because another hour from now, out here in the country, and we could possibly totally lose internet. <laughs> so on your Scotch pad, there's two sides. One side is quite compacted. It's still a little airy. But the other side is much more fluffier and, you know, not as compact. So that's the compact side. And this side is a little more floofier. Actually, I've got that backwards. The scotch pad side that says scotch on it is a little rougher. Or like, it's packed, okay? The other side is a little more airy. Can you see that? Anyways. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my light color paint and then I'm offload it a bit and then let's find a spot here. So let's watch. It makes the perfect rustic look. Make sure you don't have too much on there. Have any of you done this? Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, everybody. What do you think of that? Isn't that a cool way to do it? And then on the bands, I go the other way with the wood grain. If you need a little more, just pick up a tiny bit. You don't want too much. And 
and that's how we make it rustic. We do the same thing on wood signs. It's just a fun new way that we've picked up for making things look rustic, primitive, and fabulous. I love everything old and rustic. So what do you guys think of that? Cool idea? How many of you are going to go grab your scotch pad, preferably a clean one, and try this out tonight? Like, even try it out on a piece of scrap wood. Just practice with it a bit. But really, you're going to find you catch on to it no problem at all. So a little bit from each direction will give you a different look. Isn't that fun? Yes, you will have to try this. Yes, I, I absolutely love it. And who doesn't like rustic vintage pieces, right? Okay, so that's how we got our barrel looking so cool. So it's glued in the center. I did give you the link in the description for where part one of this episode was of how we built the barrel, okay? So you might want to jump on over to YouTube after and check out part one, okay? Quick and easy. The next part of this is I've got one of our wood tags here, and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing on it. I'm going to actually I probably have enough brown paint left on my paintbrush for this. First time watching, welcome. So glad you could join us. So I'm just going to, it's been sitting in a little bit of water, so it's watered down right now. This part was not watered down. It was just straight paint. This part's a little watered down. And it's going to give me just a lighter look that the wood grain is going to show through. Still the same brown paint, just really watered down. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do both sides of this. There we go. Get that out of the way. And this will dry up quickly. Okay, so I'm just going to set that over there and let that dry for a minute. So the next part of this, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, and Wendy, you are so sweet. Okay, so the next part of this is we're going to need some stuff to put inside our barrel, okay? So to start off with, we're going to grab whatever you have. So if you have these from your packing shove those down in there. If you have just clear bags, shove those in there. If you're down to grocery bags, doesn't matter. You can even take some cardboard if you want and shove it in there. Wrapping paper. After Christmas, holy cow, would you have wrapping paper to shove in there? So you're just going to want to fill up your barrel, okay? Then I'm going to take Christopher, I'm live. I'm just letting you know I'm live. Then I'm going to take some raffia. I'm going to cut off that little knotted part. It looks a little too neat and tidy. And I'm going to cover the whole top of it with some raffia. Just to give us that rustic farmhouse look. Just like so. Isn't that cool? You'd never guess it's filled with plastic bags. Now let's make some fun decor pieces for in this. I think that's so cute. I love it, I love it, I love it. I can't wait to do these for Easter as well. Okay, so the next part is grabbing your candy canes that you can pick up at the dollar store. These are just those hard plastic a lot of dimension to them, but we're really not looking for something that bright and, you know, out there. What instead I want to do is grab some primitive fabrics. So I'm grabbing some homespuns. Now I buy these from Amazon and they come in a stack like this and you get all your different colors. 
So I've already got one done here. You can see. So cute. And I think I want another one done maybe in this color here. So I'm just going to open up my square. Now, if you guys have scraps, old sheets, you could tea stain them or coffee stain them. That would be fabulous too. And I'm going to cut it probably, I'd say about a half an inch. Just a little snag. Those are from Dollarama, those containers. But I've seen them in, um, we have a family dollar store in Prescott. I've seen them there. Um, I think last year... Yes, I will definitely drop the link for that in the description for you after, sweetie. Um, I think I've even seen them in the dollar, um, what's it called? If it freezes too bad, guys, make sure to jump onto that link because I will have both episodes of this on YouTube after. So if it freezes too bad and you lose me, I will jump onto YouTube later and have this loaded up there, okay? Because I want you to see all this goodness. So I'm just twisting it around, but you can see the cool difference in the pattern of like the red brick, the red plaid, as opposed to this one here. It's kind of got like a cool line to it almost. Like it's it's not even spinning. It's really cool how it turns out. So you're just going to take that fabric, oops, and you're just going to keep twisting it around. Probably could have been a little bit thinner, but it's going to work out fine. Okay, and then when you get to the end, again, we're going to add a dollop of glue. You just want to make sure that you left enough to cover up that end piece there, okay? So I'm going to tuck that down. Hope you can see this okay. And then I'm going to put another little dollop there. Must be darn cold. <laughs> it is. Actually, it's not that cold. I shouldn't say that. We're in Canada, so it's really not that cold for us. If it was too cold, it really doesn't snow when it gets too cold. But um, when it's like around the zero it does snow for us and that's in celsius of course as opposed to you guys in fahrenheit all right so there is my candy cane you can trim off any of your edges and those are look super cute in there and of course you can do them in whatever colors you want now my other idea for inside this cute little bin so we got some candy canes so far and then you can kind of just jam them in there right well, I say that, but there we go. But I would stick a few of those in there. They would look super cute. Then we can also take some, let's take this fabric here, a beautiful blue. So I have a stack of blue, I have a stack of green, and I also have a stack of the red. I bought all three from Amazon, and I absolutely love them. I want to find my right edge that's going to unravel nicely here. There we go. And I'm going to cut, how big of a piece do I want? Let's grab one of my styrofoam balls. So this ball is, I would say probably inch, inch and a half styrofoam ball or plastic ping pong balls from the dollar store. They would work well too. So I'm not big on measurings. I just eyeball things. And let's see, I'm gonna go to my knuckle here. So approximately to my knuckle over there. <laughs> How many of you measure like that? Turn my fabric, I'm gonna lose that ball. I got another one though. You can just rip it or you can cut it, whatever you want. But the frayed edges are kind of cool on it. That's just to loosen up some stitches there, okay? That styrofoam ball bit the dust. 
So let's grab another one. Okay. Now I'm going to take my styrofoam ball and I'm going to add a little glue to it. Oops. I'm going to turn that just so it catches there. And I'm simply going to roll it. And then another little bit there. And we're going to make some old fashioned bonbons or wrapped candies. Okay, so we've done this one with the plaid, so we need a different color for my strings. Let's see, what do we got here? I could go red, I could go green. I think I wanna go with this one. I'm gonna grab a little strip off this one here. And I'm gonna go really thin with this one. Oops, not that small. I tore the wrong way, didn't I? Which way does this unravel nicely? No, oh, that's the right way. Just a little too thin, I guess. Let's try that again. There we go. And I'm just gonna take that little scrap and that's why I said, like, you could use denim would be beautiful for this, too. And then you could use, like, the inside of a dark denim for the ties and the outside for, like, the actual candy part or switch it around. So many cool ideas. If you're into the shabby chic look, you could do this in, like, pastel florals. It would be really pretty as well. So that's my little bonbons we're just going to gather it and tie it how many of you love the rustic look rustic and primitives i would love to know is that your jam is that your thing a lot of my house is like rustic, but then I have some more modern too. It's kind of like a collaboration of it, but, and then I just like to flare out these ends a little. Okay. So that's my cute little candies. And I did one earlier too in the opposite. So you can see how fun that is. So then these will just kind of sit in there as well. And you could just fill this as full as you would like. Is that not kind of cute? Let's see what other fabric we have. I'd like to do one more candy cane. Ooh, okay. Let's open up my bag of green. This is how it comes, guys. And the bag of green actually has a fun one that I noticed in there. You know that all these patterns are going to match well together because they're identical colors, but then check this one out that's in there. Isn't that cool? I was so thrilled to see one that was mixed with the red. So I'm gonna do another candy cane in this. Now let's see which way it wants to unravel nicest. So to see which way it's gonna tear best, I think they call it the nap. I just kind of fray an edge. And so that's how I know this side is going to rip nicely. So I've got my fabric. I'm going to grab another candy cane. And then we'll jump onto our tag. It should be dry by then. So I'm going to stick a little dollop of glue on the end. Line my candy cane on there and just kind of bring it up and bunch it around. Okay? And then we're simply going to spin it again. And I'm okay with the little fraying and the, the strings hanging off. Not, you know, not extremely long ones. But I like it to look, you know, really worn. I've also bought these candy cane guys in, um, 
think they're like three feet tall. They're great big, huge ones. People stick them in their front yards. And I'm going to do these up in the fabric as well. And then they'd really be cute, you know, if you tied them this way and then did your big bow or something in the middle. So cute. Or hang them on top of a old sleigh or a pair of skis. That would look cute. All right. I guess I twined this one a little tighter here. Let's, let's go back a bit and just loosen that up just a little bit. Because I'm so close. I could always cut another strip and just glue it in there, but I think I have enough. There we go. So how many of you have done candy canes like this? Has anyone done that? I know I've seen them before. so close. I think I'm close enough. I think I can cover that. There we go. It is like so, so close. I might be off by just a smidge. See, I've got that tiny bit of white. I can't deal with that. I just can't deal with that. So I'm going to grab just the tiniest speck off of here. Just the tiniest little bit. And just glue that right on there. No one's even going to notice. I'll just twist it right into place going to blend right in. There we go. So that is our rustic candy canes. Just kind of lie it on top. Aren't they cute? Now, if you wanted them to be thicker, if you find those are too thin, you could wrap them in batting first and then do it. But basically, you just want to fill your container with little candies. Should we do, let's take this one here and we'll do one more of those, those round bonbon kind of style candies. And then we're going to jump over to that tag before I run out of time. So again, I'm just going to hold it and I'm going to roll it. And then if you want to, you can take a pencil because this one doesn't really have the, the sharp lines for me to, to judge. Okay. And I simply measure to my knuckle, to my knuckle. So approximately there. Approximately. are enjoying this. All right, I want that to pleat out the other way. I could iron it, but seriously, who likes to iron things anymore? I'm just going to roll. Put a little bit of glue. And then let's see, I could go blue with it. I could go green. Oh, I could go with this one with it again. I like that fabric. It's really going to stand out on that one. There's something satisfying about shredding fabric. I don't know what it is about it, but it just kind of, it's so satisfying. There we 
go. So again, if anyone is new to the page and you're curious how this project started out, you'll want to jump over to our YouTube channel. I didn't realize, it's a little wide there. It's funny how sometimes they, they rip on an angle. I'll save those shreds for other crafts. But um, I wasn't aware, I forgot about my appointment here on Craft Round Clock. So I started the project on YouTube before I realized. My apologies on that. This is something that, you know, you can have the kids help you with too. It's that easy, right? Oh, Merry Christmas. Yes. I don't know about you guys down in the States, but we don't say Merry Christmas up here often enough. People say season's greetings. I'm not a fan. <laughs> so when we go through, or, or they don't say anything at all because they're afraid to offend somebody. Um, so when I go through drive throughs like yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? I was in Ottawa getting wood. And day before. And um, as I go through drive through you know, they don't say anything or they say season's greetings. And I'm like, Merry Christmas. And try and get them to say it back to me. <laughs> So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make lots of candies and lots of candy canes. And I'm going to fill my rustic, my rustic container up. I'm also going to take some fabric. And I think I'm going to go with, let's, ooh, no. That one maybe? That'll look pretty. I'm going to go with a strip because where these are glued together, I'm going to want to cover that up. So. And of course, I'll probably have to do two strips to get around it. Yeah, I will. But that's okay. So I'm going to go with two, three of those big squares. That's how I'm going to measure it. And it probably isn't going to rip even, but that's okay. And so I'll go three squares again. Okay. So I'm going to figure out what I want to be the back of my project. And I don't think there's a good side or a bad side to this. So I'm going to take some glue. Let's see if I can turn this around. I'm going to put a little dollop right there in the center. And I'm going to stick one of my pieces of fabric there. If you happen to have a long enough candy fell out, no, <laughs> no worries. Um, thank you for telling me though, because I would have looked for that after. If you have long enough fabric, of course you won't have to do this, but if you have a little seam in the back, it's not that big a deal. Let's just make sure that's sticking. Tuck you up in there for now. And then I'm not going to tie a bow. I'm just going to leave it kind of messy. And I'm just going to do that little knot. Just kind of fun. Got one side way longer than the other, but you can trim those up. Just make sure we bring it down. Get that out of there. And then, of course, you could add some holly in there if you want, or I don't think I have anything like that here on the craft table with me. But a little sprig of something and some berries. Ooh, ooh, give me one sec here. I know what I could add there. What is rustic and primitive without a star or some bells? Let's see, is that one bell? Sorry guys, you can hear me jingle in here. Or, hear me jingle jingle? You can't have a rustic 
primitive without, you know, this kind of stuff. So, I think I will glue that right there. I'm like so excited to do this in the fall too, though. Once I started this, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to fill it up with, you know, pumpkins and little fabric covered vegetables would be so cute. Just be careful when you're doing this, okay? Because the metal gets hot. There we go. So let's take some twine. And guys, we have a, um, a page. It's the Shabby Chic Vintage Chick Clubhouse, guys. And if you make one of our crafts, whether it's, you know, something that you buy off our website because we sell wood cutouts, or if you do one of the crafts like this that I've, that I've done a video on. He's... Silly phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, we have a creative clubhouse that I would love for you to share pictures in there. That would be awesome. Great to inspire each other. There we go. Maybe I'll tie this in a bow because I made that kind of long. Just like that. We're going to lose all our candies, but that's okay. I'm going to stick another dollop of glue right up in there. Put another glue stick in there soon. And just tie that on there. So cute. Oh, Lori loves it. She says it's adorable. Cynthia says it's a cute idea. I'm glad you're enjoying this, guys. What do you think? Doesn't that just set it off? So stinking cute. Don't forget about our little bonbons here. Our candy canes. Oops. Another little bonbon. That one just wants to keep jumping out. And I'm missing one candy cane. I lost a candy cane. Didn't I? Oh, nope, there he is. He's lying down. So cute, right? Okay, so we still need a tag on this. So I'm just going to set that over to the side. I've got my wooden tag here. I'm going to grab a Chalk Couture transfer. I do not sell Chalk Couture, guys. How many of you do sell Chalk Couture designers? Give me a hashtag designer in here if you sell Chalk Couture. This way, if anyone's looking... They can, uh, they can get hold of you. Actually, we're going to set that aside for one more second because I just realized we need to make this a little more rustic too. <laughs> Hashtag designer, thank you. It helps out other people. I don't sell chalk couture, my daughter does. Um, but if any of our followers are on here that are designers... Absolutely. Put it in the comments. Okay, so I'm going to take my scotch pad again, guys. Make sure you don't have too much on there. It works great just to give it that little bit of a rustic look. Another way that you can do it is take a tiny bit and run it along the ledge of it and then grabbing your scotch pad. That one's getting a little dirty. Let's grab another one. I do wash them and reuse them. Grab another section of my scotch pad here and using the really airy side, so this side here. Just drag it down. A little 
look at that. Just that roughed up look. Exactly what I'm going for. If I dry brush it, I seem to get too much. This way, I know it always works out well. Okay, so let's make sure that gets dried. And now let's do our chalk to our transfer. Over. Which I grabbed white chalk paste, but now I'm wishing I would have grabbed like a burgundy. But I don't know if I have a burgundy. Did they ever make a burgundy? Do they have a wine colored one? Candy apple red would be a little too bright. So what do we got for reds, guys, from Chalk Couture? Anybody know? I'll just peek on my shelf and see what I got handy, but... If they had a burgundy, that would be amazing. But I don't think they do. Yeah, I've got Scarlet. Is Scarlet the closest that we got, guys? Is that the closest that we have? Or did they come up with something more burgundy than that? Ooh, and she's dry. She is dry, dry, dry. But we can still work with that. I'll just grab a squeegee here and a popsicle stick. And yes, I know you shouldn't use a popsicle stick. It absorbs some moisture out of it. And that's why your paste dries out. It also dries out because it's three or four years old. Because it lasts forever. I can never seem to use it all, no matter how much I chop. Okay. So on this great big huge transfer of the hot chocolate, ooh, a tiny bit of black in it, maybe, or navy, ooh, red and blue. I think red and blue would make a burgundy, wouldn't it? Maybe. Because I just like it not so rustic. Like, I mean, more rustic. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna play with color. You're so smart. You, cranberry, I don't have a cranberry, really? I'm gonna stick my dirty fingers in here. Let's play with some color here. Ooh, I love it. You guys are so smart. I love you guys. Look at that. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. The red, so it was, this was Scarlet and this was Blue Jay. And it turned out like almost perfect. A little, maybe a little more red because it's a little purpley. Take another blob of that. Yep. That is awesome. Okay, but now I've made a big mess of my table here. So I'm gonna take my great big hot cocoa. All I want is the please help yourself off of it. We have wood cutouts for all the other kind of pieces, which hopefully we'll get to do after Christmas. But I'm going to grab a towel. If you have a fuzzing cloth, use a fuzzing cloth. I don't have mine handy. And you're just going to fuzz it a bit. Tea towels work. Sweatshirts work. Denim jeans work. Bathroom towels work. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to make a mess here, but I need a bigger workspace. So much paste for such a little area. No, you don't need much, but I kind of want it in there really heavy. Oh, 
Oh, that's awesome. Check that out. Isn't that color perfect? Perfect. You guys are my champions, I swear. I'm wondering about... Just to dingy it up a little more. I just stuck my thumb in there. Good thing I didn't mess it up. Hot mess, hot mess, hot mess. There we go. I like that. I like that a lot. I'm going to have to set it down and wipe up my fingers before I make more of a mess. Hi, Glenda. Welcome. If I have missed saying hi to anyone, I do apologize. I've got paint everywhere. Let me just get this cleaned up quickly. And then we will hook our tag on. Seems like a waste. Oh, and it was such the perfect color. It was like just the perfect shade. Making the earthquake. Sorry about that. Okay, good enough. Let's dry this up. Ooh, I even have a little smudge there. Love it. Love it. Maybe not that water glue, but. It's kind of like a purpley red. It's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for reminding me to mix my colors. Okay. So let's bring back our cool barrel that we have made and I'm just going to hang this kind of off the side here I think somewhere. So let's grab some twine. I got so much going on, on my desk I'm making a huge mess. Grab a little twine. Do we have some wood beads here too? I could make, oh, I should have made burgundy beads the same color. That would have been awesome. How are we for time? Oh, we are running out of time. Okay. Sorry about that. I won't do the beads. But otherwise, I would have painted beads. But I'm just going to take this. I'm going to knot it. And then you could glue it in if you wanted to. But I think I can just tuck it in there. Ooh, ooh I could hang it off one of these guys. Sweet. What do you guys think? Do we like this project? Give me some thumbs up and some hearts if you liked this cute project. And just imagine Easter time. We could do all kinds of cool Easter things in our basket. Fall could be pumpkins and stuff. But that is my adorable project. And of course, if you want to see how this first started, um, go back and watch the replay, but also there is the first part of making the barrel on YouTube. All right, guys, till next time. Sorry, Tracy, I was one minute past, uh, beat the clock, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for having me here, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, stay creative.